Welcome to worship with our Sisters Lutheran Church from Rochester, Minnesota. To start our worship today, let's share our highs and lows.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we confess that we are restless. In our anxiety to be free from this pandemic, we have not always put the needs of the vulnerable ahead of our own. Creating God, we pray to you. In our stress over the crushing weight of making big decisions, we have not always remembered to treat others with love and empathy. Redeeming God, we pray to you. Lord, listen to my children pray. Lord, send your spirit. In this time of heightened social upheaval, it is tempting for us to think the worst of those we disagree with. Sustaining God, we pray to you. Lord, listen to my children pray. Lord, send your spirit. Siblings in Christ, take heart. In Jesus, God promises rest for our weariness, grace for our mistakes, and a love that makes us new. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. You are free from the weight of your burdens. You are free to love as Christ loves us. Thanks be to God.
Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. The Beatitudes. When Jesus saw crowds, he went up the mountains, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecute the prophets who were before you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, here we are with uh, Diana Martins and Doreen Marcus and myself, Pastor Nikki, and we are going to be discussing the Beatitudes as they uh, appear in Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 through 12 this morning. And this sermon series is a part of the Women's Thank Offering Service that is normally held as I um, have been told at our saviors every year and part of the women's group then does the the preaching the message during mm -hmm. that service so um, today we are lucky and we have three women discussing <laughs> so um, it is I, it's a pleasure to be with both of you thank you both for for coming on board so in our gospel lesson today we talk about the beatitudes um, as found in Matthew um, for either of you, uh, um, what jumps out at you? What do you notice first about these um, set of verses? Well, I, <laughs> I guess I'll start. Um, one of the things that I noticed is that Jesus is talking only to his disciples and not to the crowd who, who was there. And um, it was early on in his ministry, and um, so they were newly recruited, I think, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, yeah, well, and one other thing is that, you know, the, the Beatitudes are kind of uh, the exact opposite of the world standards. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yes, <laughs> good notice. How about you, Diana? What jumps out at you? What What do you? Well, know? you know that's interesting because when I read that, it said, you know, the crowd was there. His disciples came, and he be, he sat them down and began to speak to them. And I thought, uh, was he just talking to the disciples, or are the people involved? And so I took it that the people also were hearing also what he was there. saying. And my thought was. It, to me, it just seemed like I, those people just must have been bewildered. I mean, what he was saying was not what they were typically hearing, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, coming from under the, the thumb of the Romans and then also their religious leaders, you know, everything was, you must follow these laws and you have to be perfect and... And then this was so totally different, you know. Um, and 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 I, I guess if it was just to the disciples, that it would be true to them too, that this would be something that they had never heard before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, it get, it gets down to the this um, to the spirit of the law rather than kind of the letter of the law. And you think about right. the Ten Commandments in comparison right. with the Beatitudes. Right, yeah. Right. 
And when you look at the Ten Commandments, it's um, more a list of things that you should do. Or, mm -hmm. um, and one thing that jumps out at me is it's not a should do. Like you can't go out and become poor, um, <laughs> or or you shouldn't go out there and be somebody that hungers and thirsts. That's not what that what God is calling us to do. Right. Um, but instead of like this is what you should do. These are a list of rules. This is you know, everyone is starting, starting with blessed are, blessed are, blessed are. Um, so it's just a list of, of blessing and reassurance. So, yeah. Uh, so what makes you feel good about these uh, set of passages or, um, or verses or, and what, what do you like? Well, they're certainly comforting, mm -hmm. um, you know, in looking at, you know, it's kind of like a, a condition and a result or an if then situation and all um, of the results are, you know, I wrote them down, ki the kingdom. So if you're poor in spirit, the king, then you receive the kingdom of heaven. Um, if you mourn, you're comforted. You're, you inherit the earth, you're satisfied, you receive mercy, you see God, um, and or you're called the sons of God, um, and your reward is great in heaven. So it's all about love, examples of, of love. Yeah. So that's, that's very comforting. I'm just going to add my two cents to that right now. <laughs> I think those are awesome. And I think um, too, that what you said is, is these people will be comforted. These will, um, the kingdom of God is theirs. But the one thing that we probably um, need to consider is that even though this isn't a list of do's um, and shoulds, but it's, it is a calling as, um, as Jesus is saying, we are blessed. That's, that's a given. And out of that, then we should help these who are among us. And so it's not a pie in the sky kind of theology where, yeah, you're poor, but just, you know, hold on, just tighten your belt for right now, because someday in heaven, you'll be rewarded. Mm -hmm. It's a, um, it's a, it's also a calling to us to, um, mm -hmm. to make that kingdom here on earth. So it's right. not a, it's both a now and later calling mm -hmm. yeah how about you diana uh, what do you um, yeah i i thought the same things that it was uh comforting and it was a promise of uh, a good future and you know um i agree that it's not later on in heaven but it's right now and it's up to us to fulfill that for people also you know and to, to reach out and to, to love others and, um, and, you know, do those things that Christ is talking about. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sure. Well, certainly in this life that wouldn't we like to have guarantees or kind of, you know, you think, know what's happening. Um, wouldn't we like to know more about heaven and you know um and you know someday we will but not not now because you know just thinking in terms of comfort in this earthly life um, yeah you know just reading through that i i thought it was kind of challenging to i mean i know in some of the um some of the Bibles that you read, like the way the word is not blessed, but it's happy. Mm -hmm. And I thought that made no sense at all. I mean, happy are those who mourn. How could you be happy? Yes. You know, word happy wasn't necessarily the right word um, translated. So when it was first written, that was people understood it. But now um, that's not necessarily the way we translate it or the best way to translate it. So instead of being happy, it should be blessed. Um, it does. I mean, I realized that, you know, that the word blessed, I mean, I looked it up in the dictionary and there are many different 
mm -hmm. definitions for it. And I thought, well, you know, it, ta it talked about to favor or endow or um, holy, sacred, um, you know, and then great happiness was one of them too. So there, it's kind mm -hmm. of a word that can be taken a lot of different ways, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's why many of our Bibles translated as blessed, um, yeah. because that that was more true to what they feel um, was meant in this passage. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, I guess said that these some of these things exist. I mean, when he in chapter in verse eleven, when it talks about being persecuted for your beliefs and that kind of thing, I mean that certainly is not you know being bullied that kind of thing is not not a, a good thing so i would think that would make me feel angry and sad both mm -hmm. yeah. i i think doreen you mentioned this in what was confusing or challenging to you and the fact that this you know this that we have to say this kind of um that that these things should be taken care of and they they should come about right now. <laughs> um, and I think that's probably my disturbing angered part. Like we should just know this. Why why does yeah. why does this have to be taught to us? But it does and it has to be taught to us again and again and again. So well um, I guess in general it's, it's hard not to feel blessed living in this country um, with all of the, you know, good things that we have, material things. And, um, but I, um, I do have, an, an, well, I've, um, thinking in terms of um, others that recently I've read about, or um, anyway, one example would be Mary Jo Copeland She's a woman who, yeah, up in the cities, she's running, it's called Sharing and Caring. My sister-in-law just sent me an article about her and some of the things that she says that um, really, you know, speak to me and, you know, many people is that, um, you know, that we, that, well, let me find the spot. So in helping others, the whole point is to try. The outcome might not always be in our control, but we are responsible for the effort. And I thought that was especially meaningful. And she says, you know, get outside of yourself, make the world better because you are in it. So some pretty um, strong comments that kind of speak, speak to me and speak to all of us, I think. Yeah. One other thing that she says is, um, if you see somebody who needs help, help them. People act like that's saintly, and I'm sure that she has been, you know, called a saint. She says um, people act like that saintly, but shouldn't it be basic? Why isn't it basic? So I think she, you know, she's a pretty good example, and I think um, in. In, in our world today. And I, I know that there are also many, many, many examples, but you know, she's um, certainly speaks to it. And to be reminded of your friend from sharing and caring, there are so many out there that are hurting right now. Um, and especially, you know, more like we just have to stay home. <laughs> How, how is that hard um, <laughs> uh, when there's so many others who don't even have a home or don't have food <laughs> to be put on their plate? Um, and I think then the other thing is, is because I know looking at you ladies, I know you all are called to do and to be, and you have, you've walked those shoes, you've done those things. But I think the other hard part now is that we can't, like, what right. can we do? <laughs> um, I can't go and volunteer at Sharing and Caring Hands probably because they won't allow, you know, other people to come through there. Um, so um, the, the best thing we can do is stay home. <laughs> and, uh, and that's hard too. Um, 
So you look at it as I, I think in other times I would have read this differently. Like, yeah, I am so blessed. And this time I was like, but I'm not blessed. <laughs> look at all these things that just happened to me. <laughs> um, but then you have to, you know, reach out and see, you know, who else is suffering and what else is going on in this world. And, and you have to realize that every day, all these small things, you know, food on your table and a plate, warm place to sleep. Those are, those are wonderful blessings. And, but I think we, we want this pandemic to end and get back to normal. And that may never happen. I mean, normal may not be normal anymore. So yeah. it's, it's tough. It really is. But we do have so many blessings. We really do. Right. And so to, to look at this and say, do I feel blessed? No, but let's re-examine the right. word blessed. Um, I guess one other thing that I had um, kind of pondered over is just the, that comforting piece that, you know, Jesus knows the glory of heaven and that any any condition that it increases the longing for heaven is a blessing. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And certainly the, the unrest in our country right now, um, you know, that we, that we are being called to uh, look for the suffering in others, like we've talked about and just, you know, support, support people and, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a big flashy thing. It can be any little thing yeah, yeah. that can comfort and just kind of redefining and look, looking for those, looking for those things and those ways to, to do that. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's, really, it's really kind of mixed and de- depending on the day, um, you know, I, we, we both said it's comforting, but um, makes us realize that there's um, a lot that we need to be um, pondering and, and, and doing in our lives. And Pastor, Pastor Colfett once said that, um, don't, <laughs> you probably heard this, don't be so, um, heavenly focused that you're no earthly good I thought that was, yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. good. right right mm-hmm. that, that it um it's from Saint Mother Teresa and it said and it and a quote from her is I used to pray that God would feed the hungry or do this or that but now I pray that he will guide me to do whatever I'm supposed to do what I can do I used to pray for answers, but now I pray for strength. I used to believe that prayer changes things, but now I know that prayer changes us and we change things. And that's from uh, St. Mother Teresa. Attitudes more and more. I feel that that's exactly what they are, that they're supposed to We are supposed to feel blessed. That's our identity. And then part of that identity is then to make others feel blessed. Um, And so in this, it's supposed to change us to change things. Well, thank you very much, ladies.
united with the whole church across time and space. Let us join our confession with theirs using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our, our Lord, Lord, who is conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered, suffered under Pontius, Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy the Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Sovereign of all, we thank you for the work of the women in our congregation, whom we lift up today through our thank offerings. Enliven all social ministries of the church, through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of all people, in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. We especially pray for our own nation. Grant opportunities for ending divisions among us and usher in your reign of empathy and reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us, and release us from systems of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image in those whose dignity we have stripped away. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accompany and aid all those who are in need this day. We pray for Mark, Wayne, James, Chris, Jeanette, Bonnie, Byron, Lois, Marcia, Bonnie's family, Arliss, Jean, Gil, Ed, Linda, Edith, Larry and Janet, Mary and Don, Dan, Chuck, we pray for health care workers as the pandemic rages through us. We pray for all those who are ill with COVID-19, for those who care for and are worried about family and friends who are sick, for those who are mourning loved ones who have died. We pray for government officials and elected leaders, that they would put aside partisanship to help our country in this hour of need. We pray for people who will be alone during this upcoming holiday, for those who have made the painful yet necessary decisions to forego gathering with others. We pray for all those we name now in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Thank you so much for your continued generosity and support of our congregation's ministry during this time. You have enabled our saviors to continue sharing Christ's love and growing in our faith from birth to senior saints. You are invited to continue living into the faith practice of giving to the ministry that God has called us to. You may give online through our website by participating in the automated Simply Giving program or by mailing your gift to the church office. Again, thank you for your continued generosity and for the love of Christ that you share with the whole world. We have a few other announcements to share with you. Welcome to all who are joining us for worship, whether that's here in Rochester or around the country. We have our Zoom Coffee Fellowship time today immediately following the initial airing of this service. The link can be found on our website. We have two opportunities for further fellowship and education. One is a Bible study that I host that meets on Zoom every Thursday at 11 a.m., except not this Thursday because of the holiday. The other is a study called Media That Moves Us, hosted by Pastor Nikki. It will also meet on Zoom, and the first session is on December 2nd. Last week was Stewardship Intent Sunday. Thank you to all who have already made their giving intents for the next year. There's still time for you to do so as well if you haven't done so already. You can mail it into the church office or you can fill it out online. The link is available on our website. We hope that you can join us for a special worship service this coming Wednesday for Thanksgiving Eve. Worship will go live on Facebook and YouTube at 6.30 p.m. At 7.30 p.m., you're invited to grab some pie or another tasty dessert treat and join us on Zoom for a pie fellowship time. Let us pray. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you and shared your abundant gifts. Number us among them, that as we gather these gifts from your abundance, we may care for all that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. We now get ready to share the Lord's Supper, the body and blood of Jesus that he gives to us in the bread and wine. But before we can share this meal, we need to set the table. So make a sacred space and gather up your elements of bread and wine or grape juice as we sing. Now that the table is set, we hear the story of how this holy meal of communion and promise came to be. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And finally, before we eat and drink the Lord's Supper, like we do for all of our meals, first we pray. So, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You are now invited to share this meal using the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for your beloved children whose struggles are great. And give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. As we come to the end of our worship service today, we remember that Jesus gathers us in for worship in order to send us out into the world to share God's love. We are sent out as baptized children of God and to help us remember this, I invite you to dip some fingers in water if you have some nearby and mark yourself or someone else on the forehead with a cross saying, remember, you are God's child and God loves you. Here again, Jesus' promise in the gospel according to St. Matthew. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May the Holy Comforter, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, keep you steadfast in faith, grant you peace, and grace you with empathy for the neediest among us. Amen. Let it 
The peace of Christ is with you always. May this week be filled with Christ's love, Christ's justice, and Christ's healing. Thanks be to God! Thank you for joining us for worship. Have a great week.